The best of the morning X. 99X. Water. 14 feet above the keel in 10 minutes. In the 4P. In all three holds. And in boiler room 6. That's right, sir. When can we get underway, damn it? That's five compartments. She can stay afloat with the first four compartments breached, but not five. As she goes down by the head, the water will spill over the tops of the bulkheads. At E deck, from one to the next, back and back. There's no stopping it. From this moment, no matter what we do, Titanic will founder. But this ship can't sink. She's made of iron, sir. I assure you, she can. And she will. It is a mathematical certainty. How much time? An hour, two at most. And how many aboard, Mr. Murdoch? 2,200 souls on board, sir. Oh, it's peaceful. WNNX Atlanta, Mr. James Cameron. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Welcome Good morning. to the show, sir. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for coming. It is very nice to have you, and I mean, you just can't shake this Titanic thing, can you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you did, have, did you, ever, did you, you actually got... make any money on Titanic? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I thought that fun. you were just kind of fighting to get into the black on that. Yeah. Uh, it, it, we did okay on that film. That's, uh, I mean, you know, that that film is, it's it's so obvious, but it's such a great film. I mean, everyone knows what happened in Titanic, but you're such a great storyteller. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty funny when we were making it. Everybody kept, kept saying, you know, is this really going to work? Everybody knows how it ends. Right. Right, that's what you would think, though. And you go see it, you get wrapped up in it. I mean, it's a fast three and a half hours, I'll tell you that. Well, it sort of worked because you knew how it ended. Every every moment of the film is informed by the fact that you know the ship's going to sink. I had always wanted to ask you um, why you chose not to just make a straight movie about the Titanic, why you chose to use the Titanic as the backdrop for a love story. Well, that way I could make another film later in IMAX 3D that was a straight film about Titanic. Oh, Cameron, you're sharp. You are sharp. It's all part of a master plan. master plan. Yeah, we had a really good chat yesterday with Bill Paxton about Ghosts of the Abyss. How long did it take you to put this documentary together? Well, it took us two months to shoot it out in the North Atlantic, and then we were in post-production for 14 months because we had way too much footage, and none of us really knew what the hell we were doing, to be perfectly honest. Now, when you go down in that, uh, I guess, that that submarine-type device that you use, and right. I don't know how many people are in we that? We call that a submarine. Oh, I thought it's like a submarine. <laughs> 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 That's Actually, submarine. we call it a research submersible. That's it. All right, yep. a research submersible. How many people are in there, number one? It's three. It's, uh, it's usually... Uh, um, you know, me and a Russian pilot, and then another observer in my sub, and then same thing in the other sub. And, and Bill was usually in the other sub. And uh, do, uh, can you breathe uh, regular air, or do you have to breathe a different mix of air when you're that far deep in that type of vehicle? I get asked that question a lot. People also want to know, like, how long does it take to decompress and everything. But you have to remember the sub I- itself, the steel of the of the sub is resisting the pressure. So right. inside, we're just kind of just breathing the same air that you're breathing right now. It's not like scuba diving where you no, have to... No, no, exactly. You're not feeling the outside pressure. How big are those cameras you were taking down there? Well, the camera itself is is kind of small. It only weighs about 22 pounds, and, you know, you you can hand hold it and all that sort of thing. It's like a size of a normal, like, a, a production camera that you might see, like, for news gathering. Uh-huh. But when you put it into a titanium housing uh, to resist the pressure at that depth, the whole thing gets pretty big. Because what kind of ca- It's IMAX. I mean, do you shoot a... Do you have IMAX film? I mean, what do you shoot? When well, you- yeah. See, this is the thing that's kind of unique about this film. It's the first film that's been released in IMAX 3D that was shot all digitally using high definition equipment, which is why the cameras are so small and light. It's really a kind of uh, revolutionary approach to uh, to making IMAX 3D. Talking to James Cameron, what kind, now I know obviously you've been working on this for a long time. What kind of permission do you have to get to go actually go down there? I mean, can anybody go down yeah, there? Yeah, who do you call? Yeah, who do you, yeah I mean, pretty much anybody who governs that's got, a, that's got a, a, a submersible in their garage that's rated <laughs> yeah. 12,000 feet <laughs> right. and, uh, can go down But, there. I mean, who governs that? Or does anyone? Well, the salvage rights to the wreck uh, are owned by a company called uh, RMS Titanic, although I'm told that they're, they're giving those rights up. Uh, very soon. Why? Um, uh, just their inability to maintain it. I, I believe that they they've they got have enough teacups. Issues. How how widely known uh, are the coordinates? How many people know exactly where this thing is? 
pretty widely known. I mean, you can you can get them. Why are you guys thinking of going out there? We were well, thinking, yeah. about thinking of it. Yeah, yeah. we got the new station some vehicle oil drums sub. together in the in the back of the station there, so, putting together a sub. So the problem is not necessarily finding where it is. The problem is not anybody could just. I mean, you, it, only a few people have access to the type of vehicle yeah. needed to get to it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've got you've got uh, five submersibles in the world that have the ability to reach that depth. Uh, uh, the U.S. operates one, which is Alvin, which is the one that uh, w- uh, was made the very first manned dives down to the down to the wreck. What's the nearest city it's next to? Or what's the nearest city where that is? You'd go out of your closest port is St. John's, Newfoundland, and you'd go out of there. It's about, I think, 350 miles out from St. John's. Oh, wow, it's still 350 <laughs> miles from there? Oh, man. And, yeah. then, and then how long does it take to get from the surface to the Titanic? About uh, a little over two hours, two hours, 15 minutes. No what's the, Before you go down and you're up right there at the spot, wh- wh- is it kind of eerie? It's eerie. Uh, I mean, I've been out there twice on two different expeditions, once when we did the movie back in, in 95 and, and once for this expedition, which was in 2001. And, when, and both times when I've gotten to the site at, at, on that night, you know, before we dove the next day, I've always sort of, you know, had a little toast to the to the uh, passengers and crew of Titanic just kind of in their honor. You don't, you feel like it's kind of a, a sacred site and you want to kind of make your peace with it before you get to work. Jim, when you, the first time you ever went down to the Titanic, okay, uh-huh. um, you know, you knew you were going down to this historic shipwreck, you knew you were going down to, uh, I mean, this mythological, and not, I mean, it actually exists, but this place that uh, was su- surrounded by so many myths. Uh, do you remember the first time you saw something where it, that really struck you as, oh yeah, this is where people lost their lives. Like, what was the first thing that you ever saw down there that kind of brought you into the reality that this was a grave? Yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, you don't see human remains down there. Uh, occasionally, in the debris field, you'll see uh, a shoe or something like that. And if you look closely and you see that it's still laced up, mm. you know that that's where where a body fell. Uh, of course, the sea has dissolved away the the skeletal remains. We've never seen anything like that, even though we went, you know, all through the inside of the ship with our with our robot vehicles on this expedition. I think it's more of a sense of, like, say on the first dive, I was so just busy to start shooting and not really letting the emotional side of it hit me. And then we, we, we landed on the boat deck, which is where, you know, of course, all the people came out and gathered to get on the boats. And just seeing the davits there that lowered the boats over the side and knowing that this is where people stood and said goodbye and knowing that the band played right there. And like, you know, we landed on the port side right adjacent to the first class entrance. And, mm. you know, I, I literally knew that right at that little on that little patch of decking that I was looking at, that's where the band had stood. And you yeah, think, my is God, any- the, the Titanic band played right there. And all of a sudden, it's not a myth anymore. It's not a story anymore. It's real. Is it in color? Because you lose color as you go that deep. You have to shoot shoot with colored lights to uh, bring the color back? Yeah, we, we brought a lot of lighting down with us. In fact, we even brought a whole second ship with us this time, That and its sole purpose was to lower down a big lighting unit on a uh, on a two-and-a-half-mile-long steel cable wow. and use that to, uh, to help additionally light up the wreck because it's such a huge... You know, artifact, and and uh, you know, in shooting uh, shooting in the deep ocean, there's obviously no light whatsoever from the sun, and you've got to bring all your lights. And the, the difficulty is, it's kind of like kind of like lighting a uh, uh, a football stadium with a flashlight. You're only right. going to see part of it at any one time. Right. All right, James. Well, thank you. Okay. Good talking to you guys. Yeah. I look forward to seeing Ghost of the Abyss and open IMAX tomorrow. You should check it out. James Cameron on the Morning X. Thank you. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. The best of the Morning X. 99X.